morning, Mr. Beetle. Good morning. So today I'm planning on doing some odds and ends in the house, but um, our areas around our perimeter fence are extremely high on their grass area, on, on like on the height of the grass. Um, and so we are, during the day when the roads aren't busy and nobody's home, we're moving the cows outside of our fences so they can eat that before we mow it. So that's what I'm working on right now is setting up a lane to get her to this section here. But I like to do it when there's not people home um, so that there's not like a random cow out where people might be. In the past few years, I've not been able to keep up with the exterior of our fences being super tidy, um, just because of life. But this year I'm really trying to, before I mow, run her on this just to maximize our grass. Um, we put our fence where we put it because there's an underground water line um, and so we can't obviously um, put the fence posts down where the water lines are, but we also didn't want to put the water line inside of the fence because then our fence would be way too close to the public roads. And honestly, I don't even know if we could do that. So we opted to put our fences where we did, but uh, sadly when we did it that way, we lost a ton of grazing on our already limited property. Last year, when I did mow it, we bagged a lot of it. But we noticed she still wasted a ton. So this year, my goal is to mow it weekly like, you know, normal, since it isn't in our field fence, but try to get her on it before we mow. That's my goal. I don't know if it'll happen. So last year, I would bag it and feed it to her, but we noticed she wasted a lot of it. <laughs> and then every time I'd run the mower, or somebody would run the mower, she would yell at him, expecting that she was gonna get her snack when it wasn't actually <laughs> time for her to get a snack. So this year, we're gonna try it this way and see, sorry guys, see if, it helps with her obnoxious bellowing. I'd love to be able to set like a consistent paddock up like I do inside the fence where I only have to move a fence every day instead of like rolling it up, moving posts and everything, but it doesn't really work on the outside. So this does take a while, but it also feeds her. So in my opinion, while it's a pain in the butt, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Not everybody would agree with me, but for us at work, it works.
on, Gail. So we did the things that they suggest, you know, we had been watching the property, seeing where the wet spots were, um, figuring out like where's the grass grow best and all those sort of things. Watched the weather, seen our freezes and our thaws. So we, we jumped on it. We bought our first cow. That year, <laughs> the weather completely changed and has never been the same since. Um, when we first bought this property, we had consistent freezes in the winter. Um, midsummer, we would have droughts. Predictable things. Well, <laughs> since we bought, brought large animals on here, we've had almost no consistent freezes in the winter. Past like, you know, two days. We've had um, massively wet summers. Um, so... The plan we had and we thought was going to work doesn't work anymore. So, um, like this area that I'm getting ready to walk back over to where she's at, it used to get really dry in the summer and be abundant in grass. Well, now it's always saturated. Um, we put her on it one day and here in a second I'll show you how muddy it got and after after one day of her being on it so um we're gonna put her down here on this area um and the issue we have with this area is it's gonna be the same as the other area it is it stays saturated it stays wet um it's almost never fully dry so we don't want to put her on here too long or it'll wind up like this so this is after just one day of her being down on this area it's just, just gets muddy. So we'll let her graze and the baby graze down here all day and I'll keep an eye on them. I come out and check on them like every 10 minutes just to make sure she's still where she's supposed to be. And let her eat her heart's content. What are you doing? What are you doing? You being silly? You being silly? <laughs> Are you embarrassed? Mo, are you embarrassed? <laughs> Sorry. I had somebody ask me recently, well, do you think she's hungry? Do you not think you're feeding her enough? When they heard her yelling like that. And uh, I had to chuckle because literally right next to her was a bin of fresh hay that I had just given her. Um, and so, if you've never been around a cow in the springtime, the best way that I can describe it is, you know that kid who has had vegetables and meat and like healthy, nutrient dense food, um, but knows that like cookies are for dessert or pudding or something like their favorite thing is coming. Um, and so they're just like, mom, is it ready? Mom, is it ready? Mom, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Mom, is it ready? That's the best way that I can describe a, her this spring where our grass is not in their fields. She's still like been on hay pre predominantly, but we're putting on her on the grass during the day so she doesn't get like diarrhea and stuff. So it's like that. It's like that kid who's like, mom, I've eaten all my vegetables. I've eaten all my meat. Can I please have my, my sweet treats now? So no, she's not hungry. No, she's not underweight. She's a dual purpose cow. Um, she's not gonna beef up quite like a, a meat cow would, but she's not gonna be all skin and bones like a full dairy cow will be. So um, yeah, she's just impatient. <laughs> but she's out there now, she's grazing, she's happy. I'm gonna come in here and finish tidying up the kitchen and then that way when the kids get back, the boys have lessons today, piano lessons. When they get back from their piano lessons, um, DJ and Lexi can help me make some violet 
jelly. We've been having that steep and um, some dandelion jelly. We actually had a batch of these both steeping and then the power went out last week in the chaos. So it ended up not happening. So we're gonna make it happen today for them. So I'm gonna get cleaning up and then get started on that. shouldn't laugh at mommy. Mommy has a lot going on and mommy's eyeballs don't see stuff. Stinker. Um, Doesn't mean I can see stuff. Just means that mommy can see what she does see clearly. Um, oh. I just didn't know that. You did not know that. What are you doing? I'm going to draw daddy a picture. Of what? Pole barn. Gonna draw the piggy. Mm -hmm. So here's Perry. Do you know who did not go to art school for a reason? No. This lady right here, because she can't draw. There's Perry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't laugh at mommy. Mommy can't draw. I will mm -hmm. just draw one big pig face. How's that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big floppy ears. I like it. Smile. And then behind their body, there's the um. tail. Um, my guys, I like You like it. my drawing? Yeah. I think it's a pretty good pig drawing for somebody who can't draw. But you like it, but I love it. Oh, you love it. Okay, thank you. So, what I was saying to him, so like that Harry's... That would be a baby! Harry's got the two gates on his side with the chain, so I won't do it on his side. But what I was thinking before this next set of wind comes in, right now there's a two by four here on the outside. I'm thinking I'm gonna take that off and put it on the inside so it's still got that cross beam structure, right? Mm -hmm. Like what your dad was concerned about. And then I think I'm gonna put in just like a straight post here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be straight, not like my drawing. <laughs> and then what I wanna do is I wanna take some of this scrap wood and I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm gonna match it like this. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then once I go at it with just like a hacksaw, um, then I can do the other side, but I'll have it numbered. Cause I want it to look aesthetically pleasing, sure. but I need it to be practical, but I need it to be fast since we're supposed to get more tornadoes on Thursday. Why more tornadoes? Great question. Welcome to West Virginia where now apparently tornadoes is a normal thing. <laughs> take, take it down and based on its length, Go. Is it Wednesday? Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh, the eclipse was on Monday. We still don't have anything going on tonight, though. It's the one Wednesday we don't have plans. So. Okay. But yeah. It's a baby beginning door. Are you sleepy? Do you want a sandwich? Have some lunch and then go take a nap. Hey. hey! I'm never gonna get you to talk to me when the camera's on, am I? And I froze, holding her breath while we all stared at mom. She was cradling a steaming cup of coffee, her brown eyes studying each of us before answering. I don't know about that. She arched a brow at dad. The kids saved our bed. That gesture is certainly selfless and thoughtful. Done the whole thing. Mess. But you know who makes mess? You. I think we all make messes. Mommy just 
roll these back and forth really hard for me while I clean up my water mess. Mm -hmm. All right, pour your lemon juice in your water and see if it turns to pink. Yeah. What? How cool is that? Me mix it. You wanna mix it? Yeah, let me get you a spoon. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Don't splash it, just a gentle stir. That should be good. It's your favorite color, sis, it's purple. I'm gonna whisk it in for us, okay? Okay. You see it? Ooh. What does that say? Ooh. Say hot. Say hot. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Good job. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Hot water. Okay, can I count one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job. I need you to be careful, okay? Okay. Right. I'm going to actually put it on this side, but I need you to not lean over it, okay? Because, like I said, this is really, really hot and I don't want you to get burnt. Or spill it and it get burnt, spilled everywhere. How like this? Yeah, cool. Thank you, ma'am. Hopefully, it tastes good when we get done. Mm -hmm. The lemon was blue. Yeah. So it's like all different kinds of science going on, huh? And different colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bet we'll need more jars. Thanks, bud. Uh, Thank you. Uh, All right. Now we gotta rewash that. You're silly. <laughs> but that's gonna be boiling hot water, and I don't want to burn myself. So I have this really cool doohickey here. Wow. So I don't have to pick it up out of the boiling water and burn my fingers. Pretty cool dude, huh? I give you this. That's perfect. Then you want one for you. I'll do the seals and you do the rings. Nice. That. Do this. Hmm. Here. Thank you, Sticker. Thank you, Sticker. Thank you, Sticker. Um, my, the, the, the dandelion. I enjoyed making that jelly with Lexi. It was a lot easier than this. I agree. <laughs> it's not like picking the pills up. This is like forever. <laughs>
<laughs> That's fun to sit in here and just hang out with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Nathan is down, so if you guys put that away, you can get block us out. Lucas. All right, DJ and I busted these out. So, for future notice. If you're making dandelion jelly, it tells you to take the greens off. <laughs> the first two that I did, didn't take the greens out. So, did it right this time. We're gonna get some boiling water going and um, let these steep. Evidently, you're supposed to let it steep for 24 hours. Um, this is our first batch. I'm gonna do it concentrated. So, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and then I'll mix this up after it's sat for a little bit, so. We're gonna not follow the recipe. It might bite me in the butt but it's okay <laughs> all right there they be we'll see how they solidify up 